schools have managed to accomplish this feat. We test your wits and knowledge when it comes to the field of aerospace engineering. And even we are 25 schools will head to head collide, but only one school will remain as the champions. Therefore, without further ado, I would now like to begin this event in auspicious and invite the current president of the Aeronautical Society of BSNI College, Nidula Diabru Aya, for the welcome speech. Thank you, Manli. Good morning. Chief Guest Mr. Rin Banson, Deputy General Manager of Singapore Airlines Engineering, Philippines. Guest of Honor, Mr. Martin de Clark, Managing Director, Aircraft Maintenance College 66, Principal Mr. Prasanth Upashanta, sir, and other Deputy Principals present today. Representative from our sponsor, Lanka Pacific Aviation and Engineering, Mr. Dinesh Dinasena, and other distinguished guests. Teachers in charge of the Aeronautical Society, teachers in charge from invited schools, past members, and my fellow aviators. A, good, a warm welcome to you all. In hopes of continuing its legacy as a shield quiz competition, this year we decided to conduct the Wing Commander Asala Dudam Malo Challenge Shield Annual Aeronautical quiz, Inter-School Quiz Competition online through the Zoom conferencing platform, adapting to the new normal of today's society and yet again setting a new benchmark in the field of school-based aviation. Today's proceedings will consist of a number of exciting and informative sessions we will start off with the chief guest's address and then move on to the most exciting part of the event, the quiz competition. Afterwards, we shall commence the open session of the event, which will be conducted by our guest of honor and Lanka Pacific Aviation and Engineering Academy. After this informative session, the finalists of the quiz competition will be announced, followed by the final round of the event, which will also be live streamed on our social media platforms. You know, uh, I hope all my fellow aviators will have a fun, exciting, and informative day ahead, and that is our ultimate goal. Now, without further ado, we'll move on to today's proceedings. Thank you. Thank you, Aya. So please welcome the chief guest of today's event, Mr. Rene Philip Banson, the Deputy General Manager of Singapore Airlines Engineering Philippines. Thank you so much um, to the Aeronautical Society of DS uh, Senayaki College for inviting and uh, congratulations for organizing such an event. Uh, the Wing Commander Sala Dodan Maluwa Challenge Shield Quiz Competition. Okay, so I will try to share my screen. If uh, for those who do not know, I was I was uh, in Sri Lanka just less than two years ago through the kindness of uh, Miss Angelina Marcus from uh, Lanka Pacific Aviation, who is one of our major partners in aerospace uh, engineering education, and. Uh, if I may try to share my screen uh, just a while. Okay. I'm just uh, waiting for it to come out on the screen. But anyway, I was there um, to attend the LPAE commencement exercises and uh, the aeronautical workshop. Uh, I was also able to tour a few of the schools, uh, visit visit the famous uh, Lavinia Hotel, is it the name? And uh, the celebrity chef, uh, Silva, I was able to meet. And uh, my friend Shakila was able to tour me around uh, together with his uh, friends and associates, and it was uh, quite an experience. So, uh, but uh, let me say that uh, this were, were unfortunately were much happier times. Uh, as everyone knows, nine months ago, 
there, there were shutdowns, borders were shut down and travel was affected uh, uh, immensely. Uh, airports were emptied. Uh, of course, MROs, uh, our business, the maintenance repair and overhaul facilities were directly hit as a result of the shutdown of the airports and uh, non-travel. Okay. And uh, on the only services that uh, remained were the essential services, which are humanitarian flights and uh, cargo. So as a result, aircraft were parked all over the world in all the airports. It seems my screen is not coming out, right? But anyway, let me just uh, talk to you what, what I see on my screen. So aircraft were all parked, almost 95% of all flights were not operating even after a month. Uh, other than uh, probably cargo, which was delivering mainly medical supplies and uh, other essentials to keep the economy going. Humanitarian flights were limited to picking up of, of uh, nationals from different countries because they were stranded there. So these were very limited until slowly it started to pick up. Although travel may never be the same again as uh, we know it, uh, it has uh, indeed started. There's an advantage with the uh, legacy carriers like uh, Delta Airlines, Singapore Airlines, Korean Airlines, Lufthansa, the big ones, because they have a lot of different products. And, uh, and uh, compared to the LCCs or the low cost carriers that only have their low fares and direct flights, as an advantage. So it's anticipated that uh, maybe the legacy carriers are going to recover faster. Uh, although the low cost carriers have the, the advantage at the same time because um, it is the leisure market that is uh, picking up faster than the business. Business traffic is almost, uh, almost none. As people come into things like what we're doing now, there is virtual conferences, virtual meetings. Um, the legacy carriers have come up with certain ideas. They've uh, become uh, innovative. They fly to nowhere. They take up, take the passengers, fly in the air, do the service, and return. And some of them have even opened restaurants inside the aircraft just to experience the, the cabin service. And uh, this has been selling, from what I hear. Um, the legacy carriers also have the advantage of having the cargo space. Uh, the point is, is that airlines are doing something and uh, uh, decisions, are, decisions are very quick. An, an airport or a country would open a, a certain uh, airport or a certain border and uh, the airlines have to respond quickly. And the shift to leisure was uh, abruptly made. Normally, airlines would take a year before they would decide, before they would implement a decision to change a route or add a new route. But now, Sometimes in, in days or at most weeks, they would do the rerouting. Uh, although the recovery is still not known, um, airlines are actually preserving aircraft. So that's good news. That's the first uh, light at the end of the tunnel because they are preserving. They are not chopping up the aircraft. They are not returning. They're not selling. So we can sense that most are parking with an intention to make the aircraft uh, fly again one day so a lot of them are keeping the aircraft flyable a lot of them park in the desert but they're not disposing um well maybe some of the older aircraft might not fly again some would say that uh, uh most of the 747s and the a380s even might not go back to the skies but uh that is uh that is quite a bold prediction uh in short, we, we need some patience to stretch out to the midterm. Uh, you, you notice that it's a long term, but uh, with the entry of the vaccines and the new normal, I think we can look at the midterm. Some estimate this to be uh, a year or a few years, but uh, it's slowly growing. Delta, I think, mentioned that uh, they've been growing 1% a week, well, except for for 
thoughts of or you hear the word the second wave uh, or the fact that uh, as I mentioned some aircraft the older aircraft might not uh, fly again that's not good news for the MROs MROs you would usually uh, specialized in certain types of aircraft and the older aircraft are more profitable in servicing than the newer aircraft but these are bumps on the road I consider just bumps on the road which we must tackle we uh, just the same people need to get away people need to congregate uh, people need to meet their friends and relatives so so it's just going to be a balance of renewed uh, demand and the uh, safe distancing the, no, the new normal will definitely allow this so the stakeholders just need to work together to overcome but if uh, for those of you who plan to go into the mro um, industry um, we will probably need to choose between the different types of MROs. The ones that are going to be the most active and recover the fastest are the modifications MRO, those converting passenger to, to cargo, for example, those uh, adjusting for safe distancing uh, new normals. Those are the modifications MRO. Uh, next, of course, line maintenance, because this entirely depends on the number of aircraft that is flying. So as we start to pick up, we count it by the number of uh, uh, frequencies that have come back. So line maintenance will recover just as fast. And uh, next in priority is the components MRO. This is always uh, uh, a strong area in the industry of the maintenance repair and overall facility. Um, next, of course, is the engine MRO. Engines have to be preserved. Engines have to be have to keep to, uh, running. It's mainly the thing that uh, powers the aircraft. So it's responsible for the entire safety of the, of the aircraft. Uh, lastly, unfortunately, is airframe or base maintenance where SI Engineering Philippines uh, belongs. However, the differences are quite small in terms of percentages. Uh, percentages if we get to measure the, the quickness in recovery of these different uh, types of MROs, um, just the same, uh, airlines are going to be flying and maintenance will be a requirement. So if we look at the order, fastest recovering MROs, as I mentioned, the modifications, component, line maintenance, engine, and then the airframe. And uh, as a last piece of advice, if you're going to choose MROs who, you choose MROs who are consolidated with either an OEM or an equi original equipment manufacturer, such as Airbus or Boeing, um, or those consolidated with an airline, such as, uh, of course, SI Engineering is uh, is uh, owned by uh, Singapore Airlines. Uh, Lufthansa Technique is owned by Lufthansa. Uh, those type of MROs versus the independent. Of course, a combination of uh, of an MRO being connected with an OEM and an airline is also uh, a very good choice. So uh, with that, uh, I'd like to thank, thank you, thank all of you, and uh, good luck to you. Uh, please, everyone, stay safe. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. As we will be beginning the quiz shortly, I would now like to explain the rules and regulations of the first round of today's quiz. Here are the rules and regulations. When the quiz competition starts, all teams will be directed to separate meeting rooms with a presenter for each team so that the team members can discuss with each other without being overheard by other teams. Other than the devices of all members which have been used to join the meeting, one separate device will be necessary for the team captain, which should be used as the device to answer Google Forms. 
the google form should be used to answer the quiz the team leader will receive a google form link which is only to be used by the team captain to submit the answers the presenter will play a slide show sharing his screen in which the team can view the questions and the answers one question will accommodate one slide for 20 seconds in other words a question will only be displayed for a time duration of 20 seconds the team has to discuss the answer within that time and the team leader has to submit the answer in the google form the google form contains neither questions no answers but only the question number and the letters of the answers the team captain has to select the letter of the answer the team captain has 15 minutes to submit all the answers from the start time of the quiz extra time of 2 minutes will be allocated considering all the facts including technical difficulties that may occur if the time limit exceeds your answers will be rejected marks will automatically be calculated by the form and will be checked again by the officials during the quiz all participants should turn on their cameras and turning off cameras during the quiz without an acceptable reason will result in disqualification of the whole team if any member is found to be referring any supporting material books internet searching etc during the quiz it will result in immediate disqualification of the team all the quizzes will be recorded by the official if any participant is found to be referring to any of the above quiz material as mentioned above it will also result in the disqualification of the whole team if there are teams tied in the top 3 places after the quiz a tie breaker will be held on the same day the two teams with the highest points after the primary round will get qualified for the finals of the wing commander asala dolamalua challenge shield quiz which will be held as an online oral quiz in the evening of the respective day here is the format of the quiz in the primary round the quiz will consist of 40 mcq questions each correct answer will have one point the two teams with the highest points after the primary round will get qualified for the final of the wing commander asala donan malua challenge shield quiz which will be held as an online oral quiz in the evening of the respective day if there are any times any ties in the teams for the top 3 position a tie breaker will be held on the same day by connecting the tied teams separately with a zoom meeting thank you so those are the rules and regulations of the first event you will now be directed to specific break rooms good luck to you all and please be patient with us thank you